First, let's take some 0.1 molar iron 3 chloride. If we add about a mil to a test tube here, perhaps a little more, and we then add a small piece of magnesium metal, the magnesium will react with the iron 3 chloride, which is acidic so that it fizzes, but a displacement reaction also occurs. You might like to think which metal is being deposited on the surface of the magnesium. So if we then take a strong neodymium magnet, you can see the magnesium is attracted to the magnet. Next we're going to make a small diver like the one on the paper towel here. To do that we are going to take about a centimetre in length of magnesium ribbon and we then fashion a pair of arms with the scissors here. You see the magnesium curls over at the side, turn over and we can get an arm going the other way. And for a pair of legs for our little diver, just a, a cut down the middle at the bottom will suffice. Being careful not to cut our fingers So there's our little diver. Next, we need to use some super glue. And uh, if we use it on the tile here, it's uh, quite easy to take off afterwards and doesn't make a mess. So a small blob of glue there. And we just dip various parts. And I'm putting this square head in and maybe his arms into the super glue there. And then if we take a very small amount of manganese dioxide and dip the magnesium into that, of course, some of the manganese dioxide is attracted to the surface. and becomes stuck on. Just need to turn him over with the tweezers here. There, so we've got some on there and we leave that to dry next to his buddy there. Next we need to take the diving chamber and that's a 10 centimeter cubed measuring cylinder. And into the bottom of the measuring cylinder, we put about two centimeters cubed of this two molar sodium hydroxide. It's not essential that you get exactly two centimeters cubed. Uh, next, we are going to add about two centimetres cubed of this hydrogen peroxide from the pharmacy, 6% uh, solution. So again, we approximately double the volume to about four or thereabouts. Next, we add something like uh, 10 migs 20 mix or so of luminol and uh, no need to measure that accurately just get a small amount on the end of the spatula there maybe a little too much there, it doesn't hurt and we add that into the measuring cylinder now we need to mix them and we can mix them thoroughly using a dropping pipette such as this one and all we need to do is to Mix 
mix and the luminol seems to dissolve most of it quite nicely. Well next we're going to increase the density of this layer and we're going to do that by adding about uh, three mils of this concentrated sucrose solution which was made by dissolving 60 grams of sucrose into 45 mils of water or in that proportion so about three mils which will take us up to about seven or eight again we need to ensure that that's thoroughly mixed and one of the pertinent reactions that we've got potentially here is that the manganese dioxide on the piece of magnesium there will react with the hydrogen peroxide uh, yielding oxygen gas which will be at the surface of the magnesium and should cause it to float up but otherwise this is an alkaline solution. Uh, next we need to uh, add a layer of distilled water. Um, I'm probably going to do this too quickly by squirting with the bottle um, but this needs to be run gently down the side trying not to mix the two layers so this should sit as a layer on top and it's not precise how much one adds there as long as you've got uh, a layer on top well this is the same 0.1 molar iron 3 chloride that was in the test tube and we know that the magnesium will react with that completely uh, due to its acidic nature but we've also got some solid being deposited down there and that solid is of course attracted to the magnet which you may or may not be able to pick up on the video camera there so all we do is we pop our little diver into the iron 3 chloride, give him a little shake and he of course starts to react fizzing but we've also got that same displacement reaction going on and you should be able to see that he's parts of him are becoming attracted to the magnet now well we don't want too much of the magnesium to be eaten away so the next thing that we do is after a minute or so, he's been in only a few seconds, I know, um, but we take him out and he's now ready for diving duties. So in he goes into the top and he's stuck down, but as we surmised, releasing oxygen gas and beginning to float up towards the water layer. But another reaction that we've got going on is a reaction between the iron three irons and the luminol but we can of course make our diver come down to the bottom and release him and again down he goes and release him the question is what's happening if we view this in the dark so we'll now go through to the dark room and we'll also once we're in there have a look see if we can see anything using the magnet and we'll also add a few drops of iron 3 chloride from the top so we'll just remove the camera take the diver and transfer through to the dark area Now, probably very difficult to see anything at this juncture. We're hoping that we can see some chemiluminescence from the luminol. So now, using the magnet, drawing the diver down. Very faint blue glow, but I don't think that's picking up on the camera especially well. Again, drawing him down again. 
and letting him float up. Just going to turn the light on for a second so that we can have a look at that. The light's not working for us today. So we increase the light, the natural light from the side. Here we go again. Where's the diver? There he is, midway. And there he comes down to the bottom. And he's slowly going to float up. Now we'll try closing all of the lights and adding some of the iron 3 chloride to the top of the measuring cylinder. You may see some blue flashes, you may not. So again if we take our diver and draw him down. Not sure that's picking up on the camera terribly well. He's down at the bottom of the measuring cylinder now and he's slowly moving up. Just hit the interface and if he goes up into the top layer which has now become very dark you should see again a ghostly figure producing some bubbles. Let's draw him down again. Here we go. is down towards the bottom, release, he's going to slowly rise, there he goes, now he's still at the bottom, difficult to see, he's rising now, I think he made it up into the top blue layer there again draw him down there he is release hopefully you can pick up the blue chemiluminescent reaction of the luminol there let's once more go into a little lighter area hopefully the camera can focus We'll in fact go back into the lab. You should be able to see that where we added the iron tree chloride, it's now formed a dark layer at the top. But here we go again, pulling the magnesium diver. Where is he? Come on, he's got to be in there somewhere. Oh, the iron's become a dis and attach from him, look, come on, there he is. Now his uh, magnetic shield, as it were, has been taken off. Now no longer have a moving diver, which is a pity, but I mean, that's... Uh, you're not stuck at the top, I think he is. You know, he's stuck at the top in those bubbles of gas there. It's just, oh, there he goes. So is he still magnetic? Yes, he is. He was totally uh, surrounded by the bubbles there. Oh, come on. Of course, the problem is you won't see any blue light uh, under these conditions. But we know if we leave him down there, let's just take that into the light one last time. Dark room on there. So focusing on that. And in we go. Start to see a little glow. Here he is, stuck to the side on the magnet. Up and down. Up and come on down. Now that's far more effective if we can reduce the amount of light. Here we go, over here please, down and up he goes, let's take him up into the dark layer, down he comes, he's there 
and up so probably not as impressive on the camera as he is in the naked eye Tried at the top. Up he comes. So that's the magnesium diver. Come on, down you come. There he is at the bottom, floating slowly up there. Magnesium diver in luminol solution. Blue bubbles.